Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Skills, How to Build Your Web Presence. Uh, my name is Michelle Lisa Paulson. I'm the Education and Community Engagement Manager here at Ulite Arts, and I'm so excited to have you all with me today. Um, I'm going to start by giving you kind of a bit of an intro on, oh, uh oh, we to stop that. <laughs> I'm going to start by giving a bit of an intro on our two speakers, our, well, our three speakers today. Um, first, we have Dolly Zine. Uh, Dolly Zine was established in 2019. It is an independent printer and publisher with the goal of giving a platform to multimedia artists and designers with humble beginnings as a zine collaboration about Garfield. Um, Dolly Zine has brought it into something of an open cultural space for the Miami community and has offerings that range from all age zine workshops to an independent radio show and pop up events. And Leighton Rodriguez Casanova is an artist, designer, curator, and cultural producer based in Miami. He is the co founder and director of Dimensions Variable, an artist led nonprofit curating and supporting new contemporary art projects. He's also the founder and partner of Fulano, a digital brand and design studio. Another uh, bit about today is that we've partnered with ReadyMag. Um, ReadyMag is a browser-based design tool that helps create websites, portfolios, and online presentations without coding. And at the end of this web workshop, we'll give you a little bit of insight on ReadyMag and have an exclusive invitation for you as an attendee of Skills Artist Toolbox. Um, so I would like to now welcome Layden and Dolly Zine to the virtual stage. Hi. 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 <laughs> I'm here. Thank you. Um, I understand that also the screen share wasn't loading for everybody else, although it was showing for me earlier. So let's try and see how the screen share works right now. Um, I'm really hoping there's not some kind of weird issue that I don't understand, but let's try. This, I guess, is just the issue with technology that we just have to be comfortable with at this point. Uh, yeah, we could just talk and wing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which is probably fine too. Um, <clears throat> so let's try again. All right. And we have, are you seeing the screen? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, I don't know what happened earlier and I apologize for anybody who's just sitting there listening to the music looping. We'll try again at the end for you to see it. Um, so this is skills building a web presence. And if you've attended the other three of these sessions, you've kind of gotten, you know, we've kind of worked you up to this point, right? So we've started off with CV building, we and then we went into like artist statements, project descriptions, um, and then we did like archiving and documentation. And so now that you have this archive and you have these documentation, what do you do with it? How do you make it work for you as an artist? And for us, it's you build a web presence and you make it easier for yourself to be found. Yep. So social media, <laughs> which is like, I think in this age of where we are right now, especially being that we're all at home, social media is like this, like, kind of like weird wild west <laughs> moment, I think, where we're kind of all just trying to figure out um, what we're doing. So I guess one of the big things we all considered was that like, your audience is really important and choosing what you're going to do, right? Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, I think picking like the right uh, platform that speaks to your work and like your community helps a lot. You know, like if you're more image based, obviously, like you would probably go with Instagram. And uh, I just it's funny we have the, the clubhouse. I just got an invite to that yesterday. I, I'm like, I don't know if I need another platform in my life. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, I but it looked pretty cool. <laughs> I felt the same about Clubhouse at first, <clears throat> but I feel like it's so different from the other ones. You might actually enjoy it because it's kind of like a podcast with like real people in real time, I guess. Yeah, so you really can join cool. the conversation if you want to, or you can just like have it in the background and be like, oh, that guy's an idiot or that guy's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's really great. But I think it's also really important to like know that there's different platforms for everything and you don't need to expect each one to like be part of pushing your pro your practice, right? So like yeah. YouTube might just be like an archive for you. You might just post on YouTube in hopes to like have things there. Um, but then like Instagram could be somewhere where you really build community and like share with people. Um, I think Elo, I include Elo in here, but I know Elo is like not <laughs> the most like common practice social media 
platform, but it is kind of like the LinkedIn for creatives, right? And so maybe there's something that you want, like someone you want to like collaborate with and they're on LO, join LO, start talking to them there. Um, Twitter obviously is one of the old school, like everybody knows what Twitter is, but I mean, if you're not really interested in having these like two sentence uh, conversations with people, Twitter might not work for you. But Twitter is also a space yeah. to have discussions. Yeah, and you can consider that there are tools out there that allow you to have access to publishing once and hitting a lot of these different, uh, I mean, Restream is one of those platforms that allows you to, if you're gonna do a live stream, to live stream it to like different places at the same time. So you could manage, you know, multiple places at once. Yeah. Oh, awesome. What is that, that duck icon? That one I'm not familiar with. Oh, the duck? Um, that is StreamYard. So StreamYard is similar yeah. to Restream, but I think Restream has more platforms. StreamYard is the one where you can broadcast to like Facebook, YouTube, and yeah. Zoom, I think at the exact same time. Yeah, I think that, so, that section we have there is really important because it, it's especially during the pandemic, I've been watching so many streams of like art talks and anything, you know, like DJ sets. And it's been really important for this time. You know? Yeah. Like longer form talks and video and all that stuff. Yeah, I definitely think that that's also something to consider is like the form, like even if it's a video, short form videos are different from long form videos, obviously. Instagram, I think is great for short form videos. I know they're trying to get you into doing long form videos on Instagram, but I don't think it's that common practice yet for most people. Um, I think that TikTok is great if you wanna go viral. Uh, they found that TikTok is one of the easiest platforms to use if you do wanna go viral on the internet, which is really interesting. Um, but then like YouTube is really great because you can live stream on YouTube and also archive the live stream. Same with something like Facebook as well. And so it's really important to have some kind of social media platform that you use that shares your, your to your audience, what you, who you are. I think one of the big things that we talked about in prepping for this conversation was like, <laughs> <laughs> Dog management. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we talked about with this was that your social media doesn't have to be like a portfolio only. It can also be an opportunity for your community to learn about what um, you do, why you do it, the different things that motivate you, that interest you, um, and like inspire you as well. It doesn't have to be just like a feed <laughs> of just like images of your work. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I keep thinking about if you're going to dive into social media and consider it a serious place, uh, be intentional about every platform and how you engage in those different platforms. Um, you know, and also you may have different eyes in different platforms. For difference between TikTok and Facebook are, you know, huge. Um, and I feel like you can, you can think about and tailor, um, you know, the content uh, in each different, uh, you know, platform in terms of like, you know, Facebook might be a little bit more like, you know, a different audience, maybe um, the people who might be looking at your work are, it might be an older audience, a more experienced curator audience, uh, you know, your, your, uh, you know, your social network, if it's a younger network might be more on TikTok, but you have to kind of think of these different audiences and how to engage them if you want to kind of, you know, hit the different uh, channels, uh, you know, while, while you're, in the space yeah for sure I, I totally agree and i mean i think also just consider things like patreon even patreon is like a paid like a pay per service but it is networking also but people can help fund your practice using patreon i know there are artists who use patreon to um share video projects or to share like exclusive behind the scenes stuff and people will pay like five bucks a month to, to support you or um, you, there's, it's just a whole new way to think about funding your practice also. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about, if you're talking about funding, like, and I know, I, and this isn't on here, but something like Patreon is great for ongoing funding, but the crowdfunding, you know, channels aren't on here, but in terms of thinking about if you have a major project and you're, and you're engaging socially and you want to consider that social dynamic in terms of funding your, your project, that those might be channels to, you know, to consider for raising money. 
Yeah, um, the, the part of it that's so special about that stuff is that people are actively supporting you and like you're building your community at the same time, you know. And they're they're gonna be excited about everything you're doing because they're they're actively like funding it and like helping you build what you're doing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like a way of like cracking like social media and using it uh, to support you and like your practice. You know? Another thing that we talked about also is just like how um, sh your community is such a big part of all of these networks and making sure you're like tagging people when you are collaborating with them or um, engaging with the people that like not just posting when you want to post, but also like talking to people and like creating a network for yourself within that it is called social networking um for a reason um and it's not just about you as the influencer it's also about you as like a community member and so in the ways that you want other people to support you it's also important to support others in doing so and you'll kind of get that kind of give and take from people when you're doing so and in the same way that we'll talk about it a little bit later when it comes to the website tagging people and having them tag you is really important as well. Um, if you see something of yours reposted, ask them to tag you, um, ask them to credit you. It's polite, but also really helpful. If that person has a following, their following will learn who you are um, and will share and like, will go to your page, look at it, maybe follow you and maybe engage with you. And that's really important um, part of all of this. And I think you shouldn't be scared to, um, to ask for those things. So I think people are really scared to ask people to like, credit them yeah. on things, yeah. even if it's theirs. I, and I think, and I think people take things and repost them without asking all the time. That's the hardest part yeah. about social media. And I think sometimes like that's happened um, both ways where like maybe you just really like something, you don't know where it came from and you want to repost it. And then like 100% of the time, you're like, hey, that's my art. They'll be like, oh my God, like, Sorry, no problem. Like, let me like, re like there's, everyone's gonna be happy to share your work and to like credit you, unless they're trying to do something shady, but you know. <laughs> I, I think I, it's, a, it's a very generous space and I think people are kind of, I mean, you're posting something on, on like out there with the understanding that sure, it's sort of, you know, in that space. But I mean, I, I remember anytime I've reposted anything, it's always, I always make sure to, you know, tag like everybody that needs to be tagged in terms of like, you know, whose work it is. and. Um, and, I, and we found like, for example, with like dimensions variable, there was a time that we were like in transition and, um, you know, I, I, I started posting a lot of stuff that I was, that we were looking at. And, um, and I think that that it's interesting because, because I found myself like tagging all kinds of, you know, organizations or galleries or artists or whatever that I didn't really know, but I was looking at and found the work to be, you know, really interesting or whatever. And and that's an interesting way to kind of build community too, because it's like, there's a generosity in seeing something you like and then tagging that person and posting it to your audience. And then I felt like these people were kind of like logging on, you know, like sort of commenting and saying thanks or like, or like following you back or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, you know, I made it a point to kind of do that j just so that it wasn't only about like, you know, what you're doing and just your small circle, but beyond that, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, I totally agree with you. Like, you know, when we started it, you know, in 2009, we started with just like a little, like a Tumblr page. And I think Instagram had been out already like a little bit, I don't would say like a few years, but it was also like, it wasn't about us, you know, it was about the zines we published and the artists that we published. So we, we kind of just started using that for like, I, I, look at my friend's work. I you know? also remember what our discussion about how to use social media and knowledge zines and you know, zines himself is kind of like very DIY, like, so, you know, maybe social, we like, did, we would have this a bit about that the zines is like the right thing. And I was like, it's more people to find a subculture. There's like another lane to do it. And um, so we decided Instagram, right? Sorry. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook, but um, I was just agreeing with Leighton, like it's, it was not, it wasn't meant to be like, look at us, like look at the me show, you know, like it's, Dali Zine has always been about like, the different artists that we publish and social media is a great way to spread your your friends artwork you know yeah and find like, other artists that make some like discovery. growing you know yeah and even even further like than that i found like even artists that we might not have anything to do with or yeah. organization we might not have anything to do with but but we feel like 
there's something special happening there. Or there's something that we found really cool. And then to tag that and, and tag the organization and tag the artists, you know, um, just as stuff that you're looking at that inspires you, you know, really kind of brings the awareness of what you're doing to them. And then the fact that you posted them and it just expands the community uh, beyond that. And, you know, whether they follow you or not, but still it's like, this is what we're looking at. This is great stuff, you know, check this out, you know, and, uh, yeah. and it brings them attention as well. Yeah, I think people are more like vulnerable than you think. Like I want to add also to that, that we did use social media, like at the beginning, like our first game, a lot of people from there were like people I messaged on Tumblr on our on our only platform at the time like way at the beginning so i think we've even used instagram and reach out to people that we looked up to for 15 20 years that we never thought would write back sometimes they do write back and they they become your friends you know yeah. like you get to meet them and do a zine with them or do a project with them yeah so i think instagram has a lot sometimes it might have you know some negative attributes to it but if you use it for like a positive setting like making friends and doing positive connection you could make it work for you and, and continuing to network you know like yeah. a lot of these people obviously you don't all live in miami like a lot of people live you know in different cities throughout the world but it's a nice way to maybe support a friend in london you know just by like sharing their their work that like their like their latest posts and liking it especially during the pandemic it's like yeah. so important yeah. you know yeah yeah um and like it it's um it's uh it, it it's interesting because we i mean there were there were artists that were really consistent on posting their work that i was running into and then started following and then seeing the work and like it was you know we i i reached out to them with like messages about the work and like it was it was you know in a sense a kind of like strange like digital studio visit of like following yeah. their work and like reaching out to them and being like, hey, this is really great stuff. I mean, it'd be good to talk about maybe doing something uh, at some point, you yeah, know, it's all through Instagram, like you know? Yeah, it's a great intro. It's like, it's a fun app. Like it, when in that sense, you're like, when you're, you're like very serious, like our academic art person to have a little bit of like that intro to your life, you know, and like people could connect with you. you know? Yeah. I mean, and then, and then, I mean, I, I feel like we can get into like just some, there's some feeds that are really in terms just stylistically of how to, I guess, present the work or, you know, I mean, I feel like some, some feeds are like better than others and you can kind of like see how, um, you know, the, pre the presentation of the work becomes important and um, how the photos of the work are. And, you know, like, I mean, I feel like, a lot of times the way you present your work is, is, is important, you know, and, and just taking, you know, just any shot of like haphazardly cropped stuff about, of your work or whatever, um, might present the work in a, in a not so great light, but, um, but if you kind of are very aware and intentional about how you capture the, the, the work and, and that it's consistent stylistically and that you're aware of that sort of consistent, um way of presenting the work um that'll just be you know a, a plus i think um there's some artists yeah, that, we, that we point out here that really think about how their work is presented on there yeah like i like to add to that like i think we've talked about this before how like let's say you're not the best photographer and like you have a camera that's okay you know it's i wouldn't wait to to like hire a photographer as long as all your feed it comes from the same voice, like it all looks consistent, I think it's fine, you know? Like, I think people get too caught up in like, all oh, the lighting is not, like, it's not where I want to be, you know? And then like five years pass and it's like, <laughs> hard, like today, you know? As long as it comes from the same person, it, it'll convey itself that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, I think if you've got one of like the latest phones, you might be good with like, yeah, like <laughs> the, software, the software will help you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, another thought also is like some of the, one of the points we put here was like, you can use like something like a scheduling app. If you're not like good at that stuff and like good at maintaining that stuff, you can use a scheduling app to do the work for you so that you can sit down one day for an hour and just like organize it so that stuff will go out. If yeah. you're if you're like afraid of like of not being active enough, um, this can be helpful. Um, and also, it can just keep you from having to like think about it actively while you're doing something. Or if you have an event coming up and you don't want to forget to post, 
about yeah, yeah we what me and Lillian do is uh we we prepare like the simple Google Doc. Like we both have like daytime jobs and we're like always shuffling, like trying to balance it all. I think a Google Doc is a great way because we can plan it. Yeah, what happens we is we write like, copy and images. Yeah, and, like the day the event happens and we're just like scrambling and then we're like, oh my god, like in the corner trying to like do this pose and tag everyone and, that's involved, yeah. like and, and you know, and it just becomes so overwhelming and that's where like mistakes happen and you forget to tag someone. So you just learn just to like prepare for that and have this Google Doc where everything's there and it's just copy and paste data. Yeah, that's we've ran to that, you know, like learning, we've done this for a while, like learning over the years, it's like let's let's have that ready like two weeks before yeah. like an art Basel event or, or yeah. what we have every day an event. It or, gets a lot to be a lot to do on your phone. You yeah, know, like, it, like we would have like events like Happy Zine where we like invite our other like zinesters to like do a fair, but there's even even found ourselves being really busy during like book fairs. You know, we're like, oh, we're just sitting all day. We could totally, you know, do some like post, and then we're not. We're talking all day. We're engaging, so we have. There's no time for us to do that. So it's just nice to have a prepared like, you know, that, calendar for all those. Events that's so that's so important what you guys are saying because I find myself sometimes in a in a total like tagging nightmare trying to figure out like, who's what, like, you know, is this the right tag? I got to go look for it because, you know, it's yeah. Yeah. like preparing and that. Off the phone, it's like impossible. Yeah. And the, the people's names and like, or it's not like their Instagram name and like, you're already in your phone. I'm like, Steve, can you look up this person's Instagram? What is it again? Like underscore <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like what I do is we, we put it on a Google doc and then I have another page open, another tab open with where I could look up ads and hashtags yeah so yep. like i can check them and then i copy and paste that and i throw it on my phone so i publish from my phone obviously but i grab everything from i mean and, and and preparing right. having that document prepared makes it really easy to then use like the scheduling apps that uh michelle yeah. had mentioned you know anywhere from you know whether it's something like buffer or even like something as simple as MailChimp that covers a lot of bases. If you're reaching a lot of people through like newsletters using, you know, MailChimp, you can also do like posting to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram on MailChimp. So you kind of cover it in one, you know, in one post. So you can copy and paste into MailChimp and just do just only a social, social media post on MailChimp um, that'll cover like three channels at least. Um, yeah. And then there's another one that I mentioned that was called Sendable. And the reason I bring up Sendable is because out of all the research I've been doing, like Sendable is one of the most affordable ones that actually hits like all kinds of channels like LinkedIn, which is like not always possible. And also Google My Business, mm -hmm. which is not always, you know, possible with, with you know, so, but anyway, but yeah, I mean, scheduling can help with all of this sort of tagging confusion. Yeah. So some these are some of the channels that we all kind of like agreed that we thought were um, some really well curated channels. And if you go through their posts, you'll see that they're like tagging people regularly. Um, like if you look at Morels, he's like tagged like the gallery that represents him. Um, they're like sharing re pretty consistently. And also the feeds look very nice. Um, it yeah. just looks like one cohesive um, image of a person. And even if it's like not this cohesive, if it like kind of matches and fits, like we get it, like we see who you are. And yeah. all of these kind of give me an insight on who these people are and what's important to them. Just like a quick glance, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and aside from the stylistic photos of the work, you know, a lot of these show other moments of the process, um, moments of the people that are behind the work. And I feel like all that aspect is important to sort of create a cohesive, you know, uh, space where people can kind of engage with like the work, you know, it's like the process and, and the person is important to sort of go with like the, the, the practice overall, you know, and I feel like a lot of these feeds really show that well. Yeah, I agree. Like I, I think sometimes you, you might forget like you're an artist and you want to put your work out there, but like it is a, so, a social network and then, you know, you can't just show work like you have to show a little bit of your you have to like humanize the platform a little bit. You know, people want to know what you're about, what causes maybe you support, yeah. like who are they supporting? You know what I mean? Like that you have to put that 
that layer of that. Yeah. You know? But I also and but I also think like we've mentioned this before about how sometimes we follow these artists and they'll post a photo of like a, of nature. You know, it's not their art, but it's like the way they photograph it is like, you know, you yeah. can see the relation to their art. I think Layden mentioned that before. And it's so true, like how so many people that we follow, they have these beautiful, you know, Instagrams really well thought out, but like I still follow them for like those, you know, moments. It's not like always really well curated. Yeah, like I want to say, like also you brought up the the process thing, like that's super interesting to me. Is like I want to see how these people do this. Like that's the cool part, you know. If yeah. TikTok has been a great platform. Oh, I know. Like, I yeah, it's amazing. I'm like doing DIY projects because of TikTok. And there'd be yeah. there's <laughs> there's people on there that you know they have like little shops like us, and they're they're pretty much like do videos where they're like pack pack my order number. For 160 yeah. and people watch it like yeah, yeah totally. like the care they put into wrapping your little sculpture yeah the yeah. sticker they put on it like all that stuff is like endearing like i love watching that stuff you know on uh actually on chantelle martin's feed um there's some videos that tie into her youtube account and she has this whole series i really forget the the exact name that she uses for the series but it's like back room packing or something and basically she, oh, goes, she goes into her archive of work and she like unpacks and repacks and and like packs the archive for like long-term storage but while she's doing that she's talking about like past work and the process yeah. That's so how cool. she got to her current work and 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 you know you start learning about like oh wow okay yeah as an artist like I'm gonna have to have this enormous archive and I'm gonna have to pack it right and you know but then it's a window into her practice in the past you know so it's yeah i love that like her account's amazing especially like every story that she posts like she it, it's very entertaining like you you want to know more about her you know yeah, yeah like all these accounts like jen you know like everything she does is great like i love her like commercial products like that wine one like jen's, it's everything. jen's account makes you dizzy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's just like it, it just comes from the same person. Like what I keep yeah. referring to is like, it's the same voice, you know? That's what makes it special, I think, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these yeah, are all. It, it's interesting because like, I see and I can appreciate all of these things and I, all these accounts. I feel like everybody's like really thoughtful in curating all of this content that they're putting out there. I find it so difficult, like for myself though, to put myself on camera or to like do these kinds of things, you know? Um, so I, I really um, uh, appreciate what they're doing because I'm, you know, I'm just like, sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to, do <laughs> you know, uh, so. I yeah. feel like, yeah, you could, there's, there's other ways, like you can use Twitter more, you know, like you can make yeah. that work for you. Like if you're not comfortable with the camera or you could be behind the camera, like TikTok is great because you don't have to be like on camera, but you could do voiceovers and like film stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a platform for like everyone. I feel to like that works for for them and their practice. You know, you know, and what's good too is sometimes if you have like a press article or you have some video that somebody else did or whatever, that's those are great opportunities to post a killer photo of like your work or yourself or um, or a video that you're in or you know. Um, so I, I know a lot of these um, uh, Instagram feeds have some of those interviews or photos that were taken in, during, you know, media, you know, moments. So, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Michelle, did do we? How's that list that we can't see anymore? Should we go back and see what? Can you go back? Oh, wait, sorry, that's not going back. This is going back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, we talked about cost saving, copy, planning ahead. Oh, one of the things we didn't talk about was like backing up your social media posts as if they're part of your archive. Um, every social media platform, for the most part, um, at least the major ones, have some way for you to back everything up um, or to just like download your feed. And you'll be surprised, like you'll forget kind of what you've posted sometimes, especially if you're one of those people who just like posts post consistently and doesn't like delete or archive anything. Um, you can just download everything as if it's like separate data from your like a whole set of data. And that might be really nice for you to be able to go backwards to, and also just have images of some of the stuff that you've done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Like I, 
I tend to save that. Like I'll save like the Photoshop file that has all the artboards and stuff. But it's nice to have the copy with it, you know, like yeah. as a separate file, you know. And you know, backing up, like you talked about this in your last, you know, Ulites, but like talk about back up your stuff in the cloud and on the hard drive. Um, <laughs> it's something we've talked about a lot but <laughs> I think everyone re wants to reiterate that like I think in every conversation we've talked about like like every talk <laughs> yeah every single one we've talked yeah. about like some kind of like cloud yeah. storage backup hard yeah. drive like it is really important and I, and I feel like if you've been at all four of these you're probably like yeah you've said this before but it is really important because I think that even people who are like like us who have like done this work a lot um, we make mistakes and we forget to do certain things. So that's why we, re we reiterate it is because we've made mistakes really badly. I've had a hard drive completely crap out on me and I lost everything I had worked on for like three years. And that's like heartbreaking. It's like the worst. And like, not, and that's my fault. So I didn't back it up more than once. I backed it up once. Um, and that's just, it's a little embarrassing to say, but you know, that's how it that's is. That's happened to all of us. You know? yeah. I feel like it's getting easier and easier. I, I feel like software and like the tech companies have sort of like made it a default almost at this point but yeah you have to be aware of like making sure that you know and now like there's like flash drives that are like 520 gigs in like a tiny little thing know. That's so it's like, you know um it's getting uh into, I, the last thing i saw was an indestructible water resistant or waterproof flash drive that comes wow. in like two terabytes I'm sure there's a YouTube channel that tries to break it. Like, all, like, yeah. like I'm sure there's a YouTube channel of somebody like smashing with a hammer. Like, I don't, I don't watch stuff like that. I'm, like, but I, 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 too I, triggering. Just knowing social media, I'm like, I'm sure there's somebody who's probably trying to. I know, it. right? They're like running it over with like a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, don't, I can't watch stuff like that. <laughs> I've had like one, like a, my last one that broke like two years ago, not to get too much into this. It like fell like two feet off a table and it just broke like, yeah oh. it's it's especially yeah. with the spinny hard drives it's i think how it's spinny but you know with like the real hard drives it's just not like not gonna thing, work yeah i mean but um just from personal Backup. experience you know i i just stopped using hard drives and i've just been doing the cloud with dropbox and my computer and they really just made it better and better and better where you know you don't even have to worry that much about this space anymore because you know, the cloud basically has everything in the cloud and you're only, you know, you only download what you're working on currently, which is something new that I wasn't doing before, but, uh, that's, but awesome. that's something to invest in anyway. Yeah. So websites and portfolios. <laughs> Come on, websites and portfolios. Big boy. Um, right. It's been a big boy, but it's all big. All of it's important. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we want to touch on uh, thinking about the practical things before um, we get into some of the, um, I mean, and something that I always kind of, uh, you know, preach about in terms of like uh, anybody who has their website or whatever is make sure that, uh, you know, when you purchase your domain, it's purchased at a kind of in, independent place away from hosting and away from email and away from anything else. Um, Cause you don't want to basically buy hosting and domain in like one package or whatever uh, in case you want to move hosting or, or whatever, because uh, a lot of times, or, you know, people might want to move hosting and their domain is tied up with their hosting. And so they're kind of, they kind of have to do two things. So to have the domain purchased independently in like a place like uh, Namecheap or domains.com, uh, I personally use Hover um, and, you know, of course, GoDaddy, name.com, Bluehost. Um, and, uh, and then, and then look for your hosting somewhere else just detach it <laughs> um and uh you know and, th and that way it gives you the power too if you're going to be using any of the platforms like ready mag or like squarespace or these or these places even though they do offer free domains does ready mag offer free domains as well uh i think so they do have a domain package as well yeah, yeah, yeah. i think now it's kind That's of very fun. common for people to also offer a domain with the, the hosting yeah, yeah. which i guess you should also kind of define it a little bit for those who might be like super new to it like hosting is where your website actually exists and lives where you put the content into um and the domain is just like the whatever.net.com.miami whatever you choose to call that 
Um, and that's where that's where the red, red domain is registered. That's where um, your name and information about the domain live. And so then you can take that and transfer it to a host. Yeah. And yeah. when you tie it directly to one host, the issue is that like if one of them crashes, everything crashes at one time in the sense that and it's harder to kind of get gauge where the problem came from. Yeah, I mean, it used to be that it was like your domain, your hosting and your email was all together. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you want to avoid that, even if like something like Squarespace gives you a free domain that might be economically good and you might decide to do that. But I would always caution away from doing that, um, because if you want to switch from, you know, uh, Squarespace to Cargo Collective or whatever, you, you, you have the freedom to do that without having to worry about, okay, my domain is here too. And then your email somewhere totally different, whether it's Google or, or um, I don't know, there's a couple of other, you know, providers that have, you know, and, and a lot of the, do, uh, the domain places do offer email too, but yeah, I'm all for separating everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nowadays it's so easy too. Like when you go on, you know, domain, you have your URL. Like we use Cargo and like they they switched it over like in a day, you know, like they do it so fast yeah. now. Like they can host you like in sometimes even less, you know. Like before late as it like takes like two days sometimes, like it was a lot of work before, but now it's a lot easier. Yeah. Like yeah. all this stuff nowadays to make a beautiful site is like it's so accessible now. Like you don't need the HTML. It helps, you know, but like all these websites like ReadyMag, Cargo, like all these places offer beautiful templates. You could get started like now, you know? Yeah. And then and one, of the, and one, one of the one of the simple ones. One of the simple ones that are like small victories. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah no, we that one's a new one to me, but super cool. I mean, small victories is basically uh, it's a software where you you connect you link it to a Dropbox folder and then you dump all your images, documents into this Dropbox folder and it'll generate a website from that folder. So it's super like, like how easy can that be? Yeah. <laughs> you could focus on like the visual of what what we do, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Another um, thing we mentioned was like setting up Google Analytics. And in some instances, your hosting platform will have it. Like I know that um, uh, Squarespace and Shopify will have this kind of built in directly into it. And for Google Analytics, it essentially shows you where people are logging in, shows you how regularly people are accessing your website. Um, and that can kind of help you to kind of see if the things that you're doing on the back end are working for you. Um, so if you're in which we'll cut to, which we also talk about SEO later on, like if that's working, if that's actually like getting you the audience that you need. And so I think it's really important to kind of um, be aware of where people are coming from, who they are, um, and also kind of being able to track when you're kind of getting boosts. So like, I like to look at that after like something's posted about me, like a, uh, an article or something to see if people are actually visiting the website from that post or whatever, or if they're searching me based on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, email. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah. If you have a Gmail, it's super easy to register for, for, for that. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing that Google makes Google really easy sometimes too, is like Google has so many things connected to it that you can just kind of like log in and it's already there and ready to go and already kind of uh, processing for you. Um, and then yeah. another thought we had was just that like, you don't need this like vast archive of your work. You can also kind of just share what you feel comfortable sharing on the, at that moment. There's like a lot of stuff that I've made that is not on my website that doesn't exist there. Or sometimes my website is just the most recent projects of what I've been working on, um, what I'm most excited to share with people um, or like what I'm most comfortable with people uh, wanting to put in shows or to share themselves. Yeah, I mean, that was something yeah. I, I, I mentioned and from, from my own personal like, you know, experience like I, you know, it was difficult to find time to create a website that I felt would represent like the artwork I was making or whatever. And I was always kind of figuring out what the best way to do this. Of course, the older I got and the less time I had, I had to solve, you know, these problems. And like, so with my site, I, I was just kind of like, okay, what's the most basic information that I need to get out there? And it was like, well, the most important like recent projects that I feel like I want to put out there 
and then you know and then just like cv uh, a, a bio and um and contact information and that's it like i wasn't worried about putting all the upcoming things and keeping track of this vast archive even um when you go to like uh you know uh, my my site it's like the first page you see is just imagery and it's all just images of work because i was just thinking like okay what's the fastest way i can just show it the work and if people want to kind of see the information they can click on an image and get the information about the work but go down in a kind of instagram grid just to see the work instead of like having like a long row of titles and you got to click on each one or like something like that. It was like, well, let me just give them the work. They can look at it and just quickly, you know, get a sense. And then if they want to get information, but it's not a large archive, something daunting. Uh, it's something that's simple that if there's a new work, I can just upload a new image at the top of that grid and move on, you know, um, because time is, is, is sometimes, you know, scarce. So. Yeah. Like I, that's a great point. Like the navigation of the site is like everything, you know, like what's, what's a user going to go through to, to get a general gist of what you're doing? Like, as you know, like curators, they, they don't have a lot of time sometimes, you know, like it's, it's a lot of, they have a lot on their plates. Like they just want to get a general, like just of what, what does this person do and move on? Do I like it? Does it speak to the show? Yes or no? That's it. You know, does it work with my institution? Like, it's probably like often like less than a minute that they look at your site, you know? Yeah, and it just shows like yeah. a, a sense of professionalism too. Yeah, like leading from the social, you're like, oh, this person has to have a site. Like, it's probably beautiful. Let me go check it out. Like it has to be your best representation on both ends. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I also feel like from my own experience, like doing research online, like it, it just, you know, like going somewhere and having to like figure out, okay, where do I find the work and how do I, you know, and it just became, you know, it would just be frustrating. Um, and, and so I was just kind of like, well, how, how, can I, how can I show the work in the quickest way possible? Um, and, and, and that is the same way that you would do a search on Google, you know, and you do, and you click images and you can see like, you know, a lot of the work and get an understanding for the work, um, you know, visually before you move on to, uh, and at least that's the way that I work and that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing the visual first. And, if, right. and if that, if, if I get past that, then, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to go further into reading about the work, you know? Um, so anyway. Yeah. That's interesting too. Like what that leads us to like the SEO thing, like with yeah. the images, yeah. and that, like it's, we talked about this, like naming all your images correctly so that you do get that return when somebody Googles you. Yeah. Uh, like that's what the, the on the second page, this like the third point is like make sure the images are saved with your full name, um, yeah. alt tags, descriptions, all of that stuff all links to you and helps with like Google search um, or search optimization, which we'll go into also. Um, and yeah, and like thinking about your first impression and your like the first page of the website should be like something that makes you want to keep clicking. Yeah. Um, and if it's not, then it, it, it might make it harder for someone to want to keep engaging with that work. Um, and, you know, we also talk about like, if you have more complex work, have as many images of it as you can. Sometimes one image doesn't work. Or if you can get a video of it or like make a GIF of it. There's all types of ways to kind of yeah. optimize um, the viewership of your website and get somebody really excited about um, seeing more from you because that's what you want you want the person to keep clicking you want the person to share with other people um, in one of the last conversations we kind of shared this like work description that we thought was really great and immediately we all when we read it started googling this person and like seeing images of that work and that's 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 what you want like that's yeah. really what you want I mean and, and before you we move on into like mm -hmm. SEO like well why have a website if you're you know go, doing all this Instagram and all this, you know, Facebook and all this social media posting and all this stuff. And I mean, and I, mean I feel like, uh, I feel like at least in my opinion, like there's just a place where uh, at least your website is, you know, it, it's professional and it's a way for you to kind of populate the internet with, if somebody's searching for your work, it's a way for you to control what's out there mm -hmm. of your work and what's out there of your name. And, and it's your place to control. So yes, it's a, one it's a professional thing like i'm serious and i have my own you know space 
And two, it's a place to control what's out there of, of your stuff instead of maybe being hostage to what a, a magazine or publication decided to, to publish of your work or that your galleries or whatever are putting out there of your work. Um, so you get to tell like your own story and you get to kind of be in control. Um, so it's like two, twofold. It's, for, it's like professional and then it's like you get to control like what's out there. For sure. Yeah, that's a super good point. Like it's, you don't have to wait. Like for, you can actually put down your thoughts on how you want the world to see you when they search you, you know? Yeah, I think I, a lot of people don't look at it that way, but that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. That gets us into search engine optimization. <laughs> and, um, uh, this part I is think, really exciting. <laughs> I think it's the most exciting part to me too. I think it also sounds way more complicated than it actually is. No, it's it is complicated. It is, <laughs> it is, but it's, yeah. Like I, I think the work to get to where your search, your optimized isn't yeah. as complicated, I guess. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> I the mean, actual like, tech it, part of it, I don't know how it works. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like complicated if you really want, it. I mean, if you're being competitive and you want to, you know, if you want to position like on the first page for a random, you know, word <laughs> like, like art, good luck, yeah. you know? Yeah, you have to put serious money. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's a complicated rabbit hole of cat and mouse. Um, but, you know, on the most basic level, you can have some level of control. So, yeah. So like for Layden, for your site, like do you, do you put your full name dot, you know, front shot dot JPEG on everything? Or how, how do you personally? I mean, like, you know, you can basically like every aspect counts so like if your domain if you're able to get the domain that's like your full name perfect check that's one you know so you use if, you, if yeah. you're able to get like multiple domains of like dot com dot net dot whatever of your full name so you control your name and point them all to the same place check another one um and then you know think about like, okay, images. So, you know, from personal experience of working so much for other people's internet presence and not my own, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, at a certain point I was like, okay, like the images that are out there, I, I wanna make sure that I get the, the work out there that, that I want to make sure is showing up on search. So I made sure that all the work that I was uploading, I was tagging with, I was saving all the images with, you know, title, of full name and you can go and also have full name and the title of the work and the date but if you don't want to deal with that just make sure it's your full name yeah. and you add it to title alt description title alt description title alt description just keep copy pasting <laughs> and, and, then, and then that's it right all your images have that so if somebody types in your name as they're doing a search whoever it is curator whatever um you know they're they're you know Google's going to spit out all this stuff and, right. and you're, you're able to control the imagery that's out there, you know. This might be too granular, but maybe it matters a ton. Do you use spaces or dashes between Leighton and Rodriguez? No, I, I space it. I don't, I don't dash it. For example, I mean, the main platform that I work in is WordPress. And so okay. once you upload an image to WordPress, for example, you have, um, you have like, let's say you have some random camera number image, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, you can change that title. So WordPress handles the image differently from all that information. So you just go in there and by default, it gives it the image name to the title. Just change that and you have it spaced out. It's like you want to make sure you use also like normal language when you're writing these things because instead of underscore, that's what Google, that's what Google yeah. wants. So you just take it and it's like your first name, last name spaced copy and paste it into all the, the boxes and you're done. This is the most basic, you know? Yeah, like I think a lot of people, I just wanted to bring that up is a lot of people do not do that. Like there's so much like IMG underscore 4,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so if you're uploading, ever see that, you know, if if you're uploading right. images that are like that, then, you know, um, the Google can't find the images attached to your name. So yeah, it's just like in the ether. Like. Um, and then, and then, you know, and then going away from images and into text, if you even care, like make sure that you use your name in the text that you're writing and, um, 
and and all the information that you're putting out there, whether it's obviously the bio and 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 um, you know uh, on the base on the most basic level, like let's say you have a CV that has all these exhibitions that you worked on or whatever, and and you collaborate with people, you know, it's like link your CV to all the places, the press, the exhibitions at museums and and galleries and all this stuff because that's really great for for being found. And then if you can reach out to these collaborators and say, hey, can you can you have, you know, in that show that I was in, can you link my name back to the site? Yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. People will do it. It's not like a big ask to ask someone to yeah. do it or to Yeah. I, I mean and, and it's good for them to do it too. So you know. Yeah. This is I think I mean, it's really it just, takes, it just takes a little time, you know, but yeah. Um, yeah, but that it goes a long way. Something yeah. that Layden mentioned also was like searching your name and look at the bottom of the Google result results to see what Google suggests, um, which I didn't ever, I don't, I didn't know that you could do that. Um, but to know, like, to learn what keywords are related to your practice um, <laughs> and kind of use those more to your advantage. Yeah, I mean, there's all kind of sophisticated software you can use to to do you know competitive keyword searches and all this kind of stuff but on the most basic level you type you know your name do a search see what comes up and go to the bottom and see what what shows up there you can kind of get an idea of what other searches related to your name might have been you know put up there and then you can do a search for other things like if you work in ceramics or if you work in you know whatever you can do some of those searches to see what comes up and then that that could and this is the other like conundrum, which is like we have writing that is curatorial and then you have writing that is SEO. <laughs> um, and 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 it's like, you know, I don't you know, you don't necessarily have to marry the two, but you can be conscious about when you're writing something and have an understanding of like these are these keywords and I can I can put them in in, you know. Um, um, in in the writing naturally, so that so that I can position with these popular terms. If that's even important to you, it doesn't have to be. But. Yeah, like you don't you don't want to like it makes total sense. You don't want like a good SEO term is like top ten whatever. Like, <laughs> how do you say that naturally in your voice? You know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, that's super interesting. Like. I mean, in some of the advice that I've given, like, like you know, with with a lot of like, you know, gallery clients and 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 museum clients, and like sometimes like headlines will be will be really long or very esoteric or very you know, yeah. and so I'm That's always true. like, okay, what is your your soul? What is the most the the purpose of what you're trying to say? Because your headline online it, it has a lot it's tied a lot into like advertising and editorial writing which is like you literally have five seconds how do you say what you need to like say and also consider seo value and it's like for example like if you have let's say you represent like an artist or work with a particular you know uh, uh artist or whatever and there's some headline in the new york times and the headline is kind of like creative for the new york times right well, instead of posting about that article that, that an artist was in with that headline from the New York Times, you know, it would be more um, uh, valuable if you post artist name in the New York Times. Like because Dr. now Dr. you're using the SEO value of that artist, which is tied to you, and you're using the, the value of New York Times. So you've already said the most important thing there, instead of using an esoteric headline. Like for three, yeah. times. So it's always kind of like thoughtful to think about, okay, well, my purpose is always using the name of something that ties back to what I do, you know, in the, in the headline, because that's one of the most important things, you know? Yeah. So anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's only the scratching the top of the iceberg of the SEO um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and it's, it's all free, you know, like, which is the best part. It's just, if you spend a little bit of time each day tweaking yeah. what you have on your site, like, it'll go a long way. You know? I mean, like, and even people like to collaborate a lot. I think the collaborators are, are really 
good in this space because yeah. the more you collaborate, the more you can develop a network of links um, mm -hmm. and a network of not only a network of links, but going back to social media, a network of posting and tagging, you know? Um, and if, if part of those collaborations is writing some text, if you're a great writer, got so much opportunity there to write for, um, you know, a lot of museums are, are publishing content and stuff, you know? Well, if you can get so into some of those, you know, environments where you're writing about something and it pertains to whatever uh, you're writing about, you're still, you know, in most, you know, most scenarios able to link back to your practice because you wrote the article. So, you know, it, it really is value. Uh, there's a lot of value to collaboration that way. Yeah, totally. Like I, we, we have, you know, in our, in our new web shop that we, that we placed or we, we put on the internet, um, I try to like, there's a lot, a lot of artists obviously on there. Like I try to put their link to their work on every single product, you know? Yeah. Like it's probably not the smartest to drive someone off your site, but like you, we want to highlight them as well. But yeah. now that you're saying that it does help us a little bit as well, does that traffic of back and forth, you know? Yeah, like yeah. If somebody does search, maybe we might come up, so. Yeah. I mean, and the only the only uh, time consuming part of that is to, uh, you know, to make sure and to try to ma make sure that when you link off that you can get that artist to link back or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but, 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 but any content that you're able to, and then also think of interlinking too. So, you know, there's so many opportunities during a text for you to like, let's say, Michelle, you're writing about um, your work and you mention a particular work there's an opportunity to link directly to that work. So those inner links within side of the site also create value, you know? Yeah. So, um, so it's, you know, I mean, there, there's all kinds of, I mean, there's other software that help you find these links automatically and stuff, but I feel like they need to be thoughtful. Uh, the more yeah. thoughtful stuff, stuff is the better, you know? So. It should, yeah, so that it, so that it reads well, you know, you don't want to just be writing things just so you can put links yeah. to places, you know? Um, yeah. And I also, one of the things we also mentioned, which is here is like turning on Google alerts for yourself. So you can kind of see when you're being talked about. Um, Cause sometimes you don't even know, like uh, one of my collaborators recently won an award and it was unrelated to me, but they mentioned me in the article about that award that they won. And so I got a Google alert to show me this article that was written about my friend, but I mentioned for like two sentences or something. Like that's important to know when those things are happening. Or um, I even have a Google alert on for the misspelling of my name because it's a very common misspelling that people do. And one time I found somebody had written a, something about me in Italian. And so <laughs> I like reached out to the person who was like, hey, this is actually how you spell my name. And also, can you link to my website? And it was easy enough and she did it. It was very yeah. kind of her to like- that's really good smart, change it. Yeah. And, and you know, that gives you an opportunity, Michelle, to reach out and, and make a further connection with someone. Yeah. And then I was realized that I had like, met her. I just didn't realize that she was writing about me when I met her. She just like had this thought after we met to like write about this experience that she had with attending a talk that I did, which I thought was really, really sweet and very nice. But yeah, totally. Like you connect a little bit deeper. I think at the core of this with like SEO is like you want to get to the point where Google is making suggestions for searches for you and correcting people when they misspell your name. And I think that's when I realized I was doing a good job is when I, I just like randomly decided to search the misspelling of my name and it corrected me to the right spelling. And I was like, ah, okay. So like, this is working okay. And I randomly Google myself. I know it seems super like um, a little snotty and self-absorbed, <laughs> but like you have to Google yourself cause you kind of want to see what other people are going to see when they search your name. Yeah, and yeah. And I want to make sure that when you search my name, you're seeing like positive, like upbeat, like things related to my practice. You're seeing images of my work. You're seeing, you're seeing me, you know, you're seeing my collaborators, you're seeing the things that I've shared. And that's like really the, the, at the core of it is you want the first impression on every single version of this from a Google search to your website, to your social media platforms to be the same cohesive story about who you are as an artist. Yeah, I mean, totally, especially now. Well, I mean, not only especially now, I feel like with the pandemic, but I feel like before the pandemic and moving forward, like that, you know, there's only so much time in the day. There's only so many travel hours you can put in. Yeah. 
And, and I feel like more and more curators and even including myself, I'm often, I can't get to places and I'm seeing things online. And if I find work that engages me, I go search. And when I conduct a search very quickly, I go to images to get, a, you know, just a, I mean, I have hundreds of artist searches on Google, like saved, like bookmarked, because I can go and hit that again and I can get the latest work every time that search is conducted, you know? Um, and I know that there's a lot of curators doing this. And there's been times when I've searched people that there's like nothing. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, um, I have no idea what's happening here. And sometimes you move on or, you know, whatever. And so you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're controlling that space. That's really important in the SEO sense. Because like maybe they, their website's fully updated like last week, but they didn't name things correctly. And you're not getting... Their website is not their name, maybe like who knows, you know? And yeah. Just like not seeing their stuff, their latest work. Yeah. I mean, and this is also a thing with galleries too. Let's say you you you're working with a gallery and that is your your sort of in to the digital space. Well, you might not know that the gallery is probably doing horrible SEO. <laughs> and so yeah, now you have a problem the where the gallery has no idea what they're doing. And, and you're like, well, how come my stuff doesn't show up? Well, because your gallery has all your images labeled, you know, a bunch of numbers. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so like even articles that are written about you that you might have like a supporting image. A lot of times they don't write your name even in that image. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and, and even, even now, like museum institutions are, are being brought to the to like the table of uh, of ADA compliant accessibility online, and mm -hmm. and you know a lot of them weren't doing that before. And part of that ADA accessibility is that they use their alt tags in a logical way to describe what it is someone is yeah. seeing, because the machine needs to you know the software needs to read that image back to the the, the visually impaired you know user. Um, but the great thing about that is that it's good for SEO, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it's just tough because it's time consuming, but. Yeah. yeah. I think now would be a great yeah, time to take some consuming. questions from the audience. We had a few, the chat was kind of having a moment there. So I wanted to kind of see um, <laughs> what kind of questions we were getting. Um, so we had a question. Somebody said, uh, can you talk more about apps that you can that help you manage multiple apps at the same time and any advice on how to proceed with such technologies. And then there was someone who asked, is there an app that you can use to pre-plan without and auto schedule your post without having to press post? Because I know there are some where you like can put it in there and then like at the time it'll remind you to post it instead of like just posting for you. But I think advanced versions of like Hootsuite will automatically do it for you. And same with MailChimp, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, like Instagram uh, finally changed. And, um, and so MailChimp is able to post directly to these, you know, so you can create as many social posts on MailChimp and, and schedule them when you want them to go out on the most basic level. And what's good about that is that MailChimp handles both you reaching out to people through email, but it also allows you to create the social, you know, posting. And then, um, and then MailChimp also allows you to, you know, if you want to create ads, it allows you to do that too. Um, it, it allows you to do a lot of stuff. And one of the recent things that they've added is that MailChimp allows you to create your own website also. So um, it kind of just encompasses everything at this point. <laughs> yeah, I remember when it was just the newsletter. So yeah. 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 Like a long time ago, but they've really grown. Like, also add to that, like, sometimes it might not work to post the same exact post in all your platforms, you know, because they're all different. You see? So, like, a long form video, like you said, Michelle, is like not going to work on Instagram. Like, people aren't watching that stuff. Um, so, maybe cut down, a, do a 15 instead of a, a five minute video for Instagram. Like, do different edits, you know, but maybe your copy is the same all throughout. Just think about the platform and how that could better serve you in each, you know? Actually, um, if you look at, um, and, I, and I keep bringing up Sendable because of everything I was looking at, 
like it just seemed like the cheapest one for the most amount of channels that you can add. Um, and but Sendable has, I, I believe it's Sendable that has a feature like a lot of these pieces of software have, uh, these apps have uh, these, this feature where you can create a post that you target to all these channels. And as you're working on it, you can change it according to the channel. Oh, you can modify each platform, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. So it's really I cool. think that's the best route, yeah. And, and, and you can also like schedule, you can schedule, you can do all that stuff. Oh, and then and then something some just a mental note. Uh, remember that when you post something on social media, sometimes it's over in like twenty seconds. And so there's something where some of these platforms allow you to recycle old posts. And oh, okay. something to think about because you you know some of these old posts have value. And if you just kind of bring them back for a second, you know, time, there might be a lot of people that engage with it that didn't engage with it last time you posted it because maybe they weren't on or whatever. So um, just something to think about. I've been kind of running into these like post recycling um, uh, options in some of these platforms. That's interesting too. Like, I also want to mention, like, we didn't get into it, but like the, the way, you know, the Instagram algorithm is changing like crazy, but like, if you do want to build a community, I believe now you have to like hit uh, notifications on that account. Um, yeah. I think they would. I don't know if they they get a notification that somebody did that on your account, but I think that's a good way to like to continue your small group of like people that are like following you and you're following them. Um, it keeps changing, so like you kind of have to like be on top of how what like. Think of ways that people are actually going to see what you're posting, you know, not to get into that whole tangent, but yeah. uh, that's like always ever evolving, you know, with Instagram and Facebook. So yeah. You kind of have to stay on top of that. Um, someone else, uh, Jessica uh, Rivas, who also works with us at Ulight, mentioned that other apps you can use are Preview and Planoly, which I'll update the document to also include those two. Um, and also, I wanted to say that in the document that we shared with everyone, we do have a list of additional resources related to SEO because we realized that it's something that's way deeper than we can probably get into in an hour. And we thought it would be really helpful to do so. Um, and then someone asked, why would you want to switch, which I'm assuming, and if I'm wrong, correct me, you're saying you're talking about switching your website hosting. Um, and I would say that that's usually just depending on preference. I personally started with Squarespace. Um, well, actually my very, very first website was on Wix, but I didn't really like it and it just had pictures on it. So I didn't really like the platform. Um, I know people like it more now, but in, at the time I didn't really care for it. Then I transferred over to Squarespace because I liked using it. It's about like your user, your usership and like how you want to use the platform, I think. Um, and also what it allows for, as I've wanted to have more control over my website and make it a little bit less of a portfolio based website, I've moved from Squarespace to Cargo and now I'm moving from Cargo to ReadyMag because I realized that ReadyMag I thought was such a great um, platform once I started to play with it. Cause it's very easy, it's kind of drag and drop. You just like plop everything you want in there and you can move it around like you're using like Microsoft Paint or something and it makes a website for you. It makes a portfolio for you and it has all these different options for how you want to use it. So that's kind of why I personally would switch. It's really just about how um, you want your website to be presented. You might see a template on a different website that you're like, I just want to use this one, it's really cool. And you just can transfer it over there to that thing just because you like it. Um, so that's kind of why someone might want to switch over to something else. Yeah, I mean, the reason I, I like control and switched over is because I've had countless problems with hosts. And so I just, you know, this host sucks. This host is better. This host is, you know, more, um, uh, you know, it offers better, fe better features or whatever. But again, like if you're using, I've never used like the builders like ReadyMag or, or um, uh, Squarespace or whatever. But yeah, I mean, uh, there might be some new um, app that has more features or your practice is evolving and growing and you need better tools. And maybe where you are is lacking in, you know, I mean, there was, you know, there was a lot of people that were once on constant contact, but MailChimp just felt I like felt like it just started to blow them out of the water. And so you switch over to something that has better tools. So if you want the freedom to do that, you don't want everything tied at one place. 
Yeah. yeah, and I, I like these builders too nowadays. Like, I'm not particularly good at HTML. And the good thing is with these apps, like, you, they tend to have, like, chat support now. So, like, if you don't necessarily know how to explain what you need, like, I need a button that says sold out, for example. They can easily, like, give you, like, a, like a widget or an app to add on. Or go in there and, like, walk you through how to do it. You know, like, things are so accessible now. And also kind of like um, Michelle was saying earlier, I think when we first even built a website, it was just to put something out there to mm -hmm. what to what we need now. You know, like uh, 12 change. years later, yeah. we like yeah. <laughs> we need yeah. so much more than what we needed 12 years ago. Yeah, so, before it was just a place like to put an image with a PayPal buy button. Yeah. You know, very basic, but it got the job done for what yeah. we needed at the time. Mm -hmm. We had a one Z now, you yeah. know, so. Now we have like a hundred titles or something, and it's like yeah, your, yeah. your needs change, and then now we have a shop. And then and also just timing. Like sometimes you just need to put something up, and you just you, you can't think much more of that. And then when you have the time later, maybe that's a good time to switch to something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wansi uh, Matos, who's also a coworker at Ula, he does our social media and communications. He said something very important, which we didn't mention. Um, for something, uh. If you post a link to Facebook, please don't use the link in the copy of your Instagram post. So what I guess people don't realize sometimes is like the links in your Instagram posts uh, in the captions don't, you can't click them. You have to copy them and post paste them. So he suggests using something like something like Linktree. Um, Linktree is a really popular one, but like Canva has a platform now to do that, which essentially is a space where you can create a list of links that you can click on from your Instagram account. And so you can kind of organize them. So instead of your Instagram just having michellelisap.com, it says Linktree slash michellelisa or whatever. And then it'll have like, you know, like right, my, right now my Linktree has all the archives from the last few of these events that we've done and also the RSVP links for the upcoming ones, my website and like it tags Ulight. Ulight's website as well. Um, and so that can make it a little easier for you to be able to include more links because Instagram is limited in that way in making yeah. their only one link. But then you can also then move your link tree to like Twitter, Elo, all the others, other platforms because then you have everything in one spot for everybody to be able to like link to. And that's again, great for, for linking backwards. Um, Tadia Vegas asks, what are alt tags? Anybody want to like go in on that a little? Leave that to Layden. <laughs> 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 SEO master. <laughs> so like um, alt tags are basically what um, the machines read, not the humans. <laughs> yeah. um, and basically, um, if you have somebody who is visually impaired that relies on software to be read uh, what they're navigating, the alt tags provide uh, the name or the narrative of the image in which they're they're looking at, and by looking me, I mean they're being read what the image is. So, in the most proper way, you would use an alt tag by saying, "This is a work of such and such artist, and it is a painting with blah blah blah." You know, I mean that's the most proper way because it's a narrative you're creating for somebody who's visually impaired. Uh, on the most basic level, you're just putting the person's name or so-and-so painting or whatever, um, which just kind of describes that it's a photo. Um, but also that's what Google's reading as well, um, or, you know, uh, Google's reading everything, but, um, but you want all this uh, filled in. So the alt tag is what nobody sees, only machines. The title and description is what you can show people. Uh, when, you have a, when you have a caption of an image, they're seeing the caption or the description. Uh, so yeah. Alt tag is machine language. Okay, thank you, Layden. I appreciate that. Um, so then, uh, Vicky Rosenthal asks, um, when we search our names and check what comes up, I get that. But what did you go down and see? So like, essentially, like, can you explain like the? So when you scroll to the bottom of the Google search, you'll yeah. see words that come up as like recommended other searches based yeah. on. The thing I mean, just just before you get to like, you know how Google has all the O's at the bottom for like the different pages. So just before you get to that, there should be a list of other popular terms. And yeah. that's what, and, and those other popular terms, you can actually click on those to see the search results for those other popular terms. So aside from clicking on those at the bottom, you can also see what those popular terms are. And then you can really think about, you know, how to write 
for SEO, thinking about those popular terms, if, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. So you just like implement that in your, yeah. what your, yeah, your copy. Yeah, that's something um, so easy you can do. It's a great hack. It goes a long way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this, this has been a cat and mouse game for such a long time. I remember the days of when I was designing stuff in Flash. Oh. And, <laughs> and, and we would put at the bottom of the page, white on white text with a bunch of words. Oh, just oh, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so funny. I completely forgot about that. That was totally a thing. <laughs> so nobody could read them except for Google. And then Google was like, uh-uh, blacklist. And, like, uh, and we have to, you know, we have to kind of, uh, yeah. At the bottom. <laughs> um, so then we have another question, which I, I feel like we kind of talked about but a little bit, but Neil asks, can you clarify how to separate art from personal Instagram? I mean, if I were the type of person who posts lunch, pic, lunch pics, wouldn't it be better to have a separate personal account than to include that on my art Instagram? Um, I don't know. I think it's like twofold, right? Like in some ways it's like, you can post that on like your Instagram story versus your feed so that your feed is more curated of like your work. Yeah. Um, unless I think that what the only issue that for me of having two separate ones is that you're splitting your audience in some ways, because if someone searches your name, they're going to have two Instagrams come up or they might, if your personal one is one you've been using for longer and has more followers, they're gonna see that one before they see your art one. And yeah. so I would actually, I, cause I see it happen a lot where people will be like, they'll follow me and I'll be like, I thought I already followed you or something. And then it's like, oh, it's just their art Instagram. It might actually be easier to just try to like bring your art into your personal than it is to kind of try to like make multiple feeds and multiple channels for yourself to kind of have to organize. For me, I personally, I don't like having to be on like to post that often. So like feeling like I have two things to post on for me would make me feel crazy, especially if it's two Instagrams, you know, it's like, yeah. 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 And I have a lot of friends that I think like when they first started Instagram, it was very personal and then they became their art because they had a following and stuff. So now like their feed is, I mean, their story is beautifully curated now and, and maybe their, their lunch isn't like they'll post it in their story and make it private to this personal friend. So there still is like some kind of, you know, curation happening, but like the most more personal stuff is more just for like, you know, private friends. Yeah, I mean, I would be yeah. very intentional if it's important. If, if your practice is important, but you wanna have one account, and I agree with you, Michelle, like one account I think would be like the best, but you, you wanna make sure that you're measured in terms of because you don't want people you know you don't want a curator going on there and just seeing a bunch of food pics by the time they get to like something you know so you yeah. want to make sure that like yeah i think uh, a story is good for for a lot of those things but if you feel like you need to put it on because i i feel like i need to attach uh, you know and i i you know my feed is really not the best example <laughs> for this but um but just to have you know again it's a, it's linking people to who you are so i feel like having those personal touches in your feed is uh, they're important, you know, but I yeah. definitely would be conscious of the fact that, oh, this is, you know, my practice is important and I should think about just how many food picks I'm going to post or how many, you know, and just be intentional. Um, yes, 100%. Um, and then we have a question from Kathy that says, has anyone ever used Alignable? And I personally have not. Alignable is another kind of like professional. Like LinkedIn, right? It's kind of like LinkedIn, sort of, yeah. Yeah, I've never used it. I, um, I get a gazillion invitations to that, and I'm, I, I'm, yes. I, I'm just like, I can't do another social, like, you know, thing. Yeah, I if mean, I, sure, Kathy, it, let us know. But I know that there are people <laughs> who do use it regularly and use it yeah. to find people. Mm -hmm. um, same with, like, there's a lot of different kinds of networks like that now that yeah. you can, like, tag people and, like, um, promote them for using certain, for doing certain things. Yeah. Uh, but I personally, I think Instagram and Elo are probably more, for me, more, make more sense for the creative types. Mm -hmm. I think Alignable is full of like all types of business people, yeah. which is why I always just kind of like not interested in it personally. I mean, but that's like how, like my LinkedIn is sort of, sort of up to date, you know, it, it yeah. is up to date, you know, it's kind of yeah. like my online resume sort of. And, but I don't really go on there much, even though there's a lot of very business 
active people on there in terms of like work, career, like new business, this, these kinds of things, but I, I'm not really that active on there. Yeah, same. Um, uh, and then somebody said, what are your thoughts on verse posting to your stories versus your feed? I feel like people don't pay as much attention to feed posts. Um, I think that brings up the thought that we had about like turning on notifications for people you're interested in seeing from. Um, the unfortunate thing is Instagram's algorithm I don't think is like as great as it was in the beginning where you just kind of saw whatever was new and from people you follow. Now it's kind of like very tailored. And I think there's people who I see in my day-to-day -day life who don't come up on my feed anymore. Um, yeah. And that's, that kind of sucks for me because I'm like, I want to see what you're posting, you know, unless they tag me or a lot of my mutual friends are t commenting on it. You don't see it. Um, and then uh, I also find that like, the, the stories you can kind of link back to your feed. So like, since you can share the post from your feed into your stories, you can motivate people to get to your feed also. And that's totally fine to do that. Everybody, everybody does it now, especially because it's so hard to get people to your feed. I think that's why people really do well going viral on something like TikTok because their algorithm is way better. Um, and so because their algorithm is so good, you see, and you have this kind of endless scroll style of things where you can kind of just keep going and nothing kind of ends that you can go back and forth between the people you follow and this like discovery page. And you can kind of just keep sli swiping and swiping and swiping. And you can see things like, like my TikTok feed, for example, I will put myself out there and say, it's like dogs, DIYs and food. Like that is what's on my TikTok feed. And I see more and more of that, the more that I like more things from that. But I think with Instagram, I think they, their Instagram, their algorithm has gotten really not great for just finding new things as much as it used to be. Yeah. Um, and Vicky Rosen, are you saying LO? Yeah, LO, E L L O. It's, um, I think they were trying to make it more of a wider platform. And then they realized that the people who liked it the most were creatives. And so they kind of just pushed it to be more of like a social networking site for creatives. And I think it's working pretty well. There's lots of people who find a lot of joy in like using LO. Um, and I think that's our last question for today. Um, this has been really great. I wanted to also remind you all um, that we did partner with ReadyMag on this conversation and um, which I think that if um, Jessica, if I'm not mistaken, Jessica has been posting in the chat. Yes. Uh, so we're doing a one hour long walkthrough demo with ReadyMag on March 11th at 10 a.m. that you can register for. I'll also send this in an email so you don't have to try to do it right now. Um, but they'll kind of give you some insight on how to use ReadyMag as a platform for creating your portfolio or your website or using it for projects as well. And also um, what we can also offer due to ReadyMag being so gracious and sponsoring this program is a 25% discount on a subscription to ReadyMag. So you're kind of already going to start off with like some insight on how to do it. And then also you're going to get some, um, a little bit of a discount on how to pay for it, which I think is really great. Um, any other last thoughts before we log off for the day? No? <laughs> I think we covered a lot. Yeah, and I learned a lot, like personally. <laughs> I have a lot more to <laughs> Thank you. And so this was really great for me. I'm really hopeful that everyone kind of logs in for the Ready Mag conversation. And if you didn't get all that information, definitely email me, and I'll share you in an email again before um, before the event a couple of times for everybody who's registered for any of these programs. And <laughs> Uh, and so I want to again thank our panelists for being here with me today and thank everybody for attending. Uh, I hope you had a great time and I hope you learned some things and I'm looking forward to our next session. Our next session is next Saturday. It's our last session for this program and it's all about um, financing and finances and budgets. So Ooh, that's good one. That's oh, the good. big one. <laughs> yeah. We did that one last because we know it's, it's cumbersome and it's a lot of thought to put into that. So thank you all for attending. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you so Love much. Bye. Awesome talking with us. Bye. Bye. Can you see it this time? <laughs>